We all know the commandment. In fact, we still teach it in our school. Honor your father and your mother. We know the words of Jesus, love one another even as I have loved you. And we come to hear these words today. Whoever comes to me and does not hate his father or mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, and even your own life, you can't be my disciple. It doesn't make sense. Honor your father and mother, hate your father and mother. What are we to make of this? How does it make sense? And most importantly, why? That paradox was dramatically played out for all of us on September 8th, 2001, in the U.S. tournament. It was the women's final of the U.S. Open tennis tournament. And for the first time in the history of that event, two sisters who loved each other very dearly were sharing the same court. They lived in the same house. They shared the same hotel room. But the next morning, there they were, facing each other on the court. One can only imagine what must have been going through the minds of Venus and Serena Williams as they battled out and slugged it out against each other, suspending their love for each other and even hating each other as they played that game. They had to hate each other because one was standing in the way of the other winning, accomplishing what both of those women wanted in life. They both wanted to be the champion of the U.S. tournament. And so they had to hate and fight one another. Venus would go on to win that game, but instead of taking her victory lap as she usually did, she walked up to the net, met her sister, put her arms around her and said, I love you. Because the game is over now and her sister is no longer an obstacle in that way of victory. In other words, I'm sorry, but I had to do it. I had to fight you so hard I had to hate you because you were standing in my way, but I still love you. That's kind of a rare example of hating those we love. And from it, we can learn much about the commandment to hate our loved ones. Ordinarily, Venus loves Serena, except when Serena became an obstacle that could prevent her from realizing her ambition to win the crown. Likewise, we're called to love our parents, to love our siblings, to love our spouses. And indeed, we're called to love everyone else, except for when they become an obstacle in our bid to win the crown for eternal life. The crown of heavenly glory that the Father gives us is worth much more than the crown Venus won on that day. So we should be prepared to wage an uncompromising war to see that no person, no person stands in the way of us losing our heavenly crown. Possessions continue to be a formidable obstacle in many people's bid for the crown of salvation. And that's why Jesus tonight goes on to conclude his gospel by saying, so therefore none of you can become my disciples if you do not give up all your possessions. Jesus here implies that to be his disciple is to realize that every, every other thing in life, family, wealth, prosperity, health, pleasure, or fame. It means that on that list of our goals and priorities in life, attaining the kingdom of God, 
it has to come first. It has to come first. And then, and then everything else. It's really a matter of life or death. When we come to the end of our life, we stand before Almighty God. How are we going to respond? Are we going to say, I did everything? I did everything out of love for you? Or are we going to say we put our other things first? We put other things in front of God. That first illustration is that one of a man who intends to build a tower. The tower in the ancient world was basically a strategic structure for the defense of the city in time of war. And then our, our Lord goes on to give another illustration of that king marching out to war, noticing that the king only has 10,000 troops, whereas the enemy may have 20,000 troops. Identifying ourselves with the king in, this, in the parable, we can see that the enemy outnumbers us two to one. For our struggle is not against enemies of blood and flesh, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this present darkness, against spiritual forces, against evil. That's what our Lord's reminding us tonight, that we need to fight against these things. We're bound to fail unless we appeal to a stronger king to come to assist us, to come to help us. And that powerful king, the king of kings, is none other than God himself. Today's gospel, therefore, shows us how, to, uh, how absolute and how radical are the demands of the discipleship of Christ. <clears throat> Following Christ, it can be much harder. It can even be much harder than winning the U.S. Open. But when you look at your life, what will really matter in the end? What are you willing to give up in order to win an imperishable crown with God in heaven? What price are you willing to pay? Without God, we can do nothing. What are you willing to do for God in order that you too may have an imperishable crown with him in heaven for all eternity.